We have a demonstration here of a very clever technique using a Tektronix 7603 analog oscilloscope to measure the RMS value of a noise wave. I certainly did not invent this technique. I learned about it from a publication called TechScope, which was a series of applications notes published by Tektronix. And this idea appears in the April 1969 and February 1970 issues, kind of retro. Uh, what we have here is the scope hooked up to a noise source. And we can see on the screen a noise wave being generated by the noise source. I measured the output power of the noise source using a power meter to be negative 23 dBm. And I look up on my table here. If I find negative 23 dBm, that corresponds to an RMS value of 16 millivolts. So the question is, how can we use an oscilloscope to get a very good estimate of that RMS value of the noise wave? This is terminated in 50 ohms because I measured the noise source into 50 ohms. The fact that I come out with these cables into the input of a scope doesn't really matter because this is such a high input impedance. Everything is determined by the 50 ohm load. I'll demonstrate that. I'll pull the 50 ohm load. We should see the amplitude of the signal on the screen roughly double. Okay, so that's an indication that we are indeed terminated into 50 ohms. All right, so here's the idea. What we're seeing on the screen is this noise wave. If I look, imagine a probability distribution, the wave is going to, or the beam of the scope is going to spend most of the time in the middle of the wave. And then with less and less probability, it will move further and further above and below the average value. So we can imagine a probability distribution kind of like this. It's most probable that the beam be in the center of the, of the noise wave and less and less probable that it go to the extremes. So that's why if you look at the, the screen of the scope, it's getting dim as you move further and further away from the center of the screen. So here's a clever idea. What I'm going to do is just put the scope in dual, in dual trace mode, simply two copies of the signal. Notice, if you look at the screen, we have the two noise waves and kind of this dark band in between. So, going back to my drawing here, here are the two noise waves with the two probability distributions. Remember, the analog phosphor is accumulative. It's kind of acting like, a, like an analog memory. So what we're actually seeing here is two probability distributions which are being summed to give something like this. That's the total uh, phosphor illumination. And because of this dip here, I get the dark band in between the, the screen. What I'm going to do is move the two distributions closer together, kind of a morphing like this, until that dark band just goes away. So that'll be one, two, three here. See if we can duck that right. Move this one up until the dark band just winks out right there. All right, so that's this condition. You can show with some relatively simple mathematics that at this point, the spacing of the two distributions that are being summed is two sigma twice the RMS value of the waveform. You may recall that the negative 23 dBm corresponds to 16 millivolts. So now we set the two, two traces on ground. I see about 1.6 divisions between the two traces. Well, 20 millivolts per division, that corresponds to 32 millivolts, which is exactly twice the standard deviation. That concludes the demonstration.